Hello. My name is Denise Mailatova from SOS Electronic. I'd like to welcome you in our webinar with Quactelware Solution Company. Quactel is a long-term partner of SOS Electronic. The company is focused on the wireless technology. It's a producer of M2M and DPS modules. And um, our topic for today is LTBA, NB-IoT, and LTE CAT and WAN network. In case uh, our host for today is David Way, product manager and Radu Igret, field application engineer. In case you have any questions during the webinar, please write them down to chat or Q&A. Uh, you can do it during the webinar anytime. I'd like to encourage you to not be afraid. We are all learning by asking. Uh, all questions will David answer after the presentation, but as I mentioned, in, in the meantime, you can write them to Q&A. Um, after the presentation, if you want to ask personally, raise your hand and I will grant you with the rights to speak loud. And uh, now, um, David or Radu, uh, you can start your presentation. Please take over, David. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is David, Product Manager of uh, Quartel, uh, mainly responsible for IPWA product lines. So it's my pleasure to give a presentation today. Okay, let's uh, go to the presentation. It's mainly four uh, contents. First is uh, some technology, and the second is module summary, quartel uh, uh, module summary. Third is, the third is back overview and uh, some applications. Okay, uh, in, the, in the beginning, we just show you the IPWA, IPWA network a map in a world, world map. So you can see the red color represents ITM and the blue uh, stands for the NBLT and the purple represents both. In general, uh, in summary, actually in uh, China and Europe, I mean NBLT, in uh, North America and, uh, and Australia is, and also Japan, they are KTM. So although uh, in Australia, uh, you know, T-Mobile uh, is deploying MBLT, but uh, AT&T and uh, Verizon, the two uh, biggest operators in North America, are deploying KTM. So I uh, mainly KTM in, in, in the USA, I think. Okay, uh, this is a table of the health operator, the region, and the city band. So, uh, that is totally uh, 78 pieces of MBLT network in the worldwide. Uh, and uh, most of them are uh, operate, operating on band 8, band 20, and uh, band 5, band 3. So most of them are operating on the low band. This is the second picture of MBLT. In Europe, uh, Vodafone and some uh, Texel, they are also, uh, they are the MBLT network is ready. Yeah, that, this table is uh, KTM EMTC network. That is totally 31 at EMTC um, network in the world, all the uh, in the worldwide. So the mini is like AT and T and the Verizon and the Orange, Sigetel, some and Vodafone as well. News line and Netherline have some KTM network coverage. Okay, next one is some connectivity forecast. Yeah, in uh, according to the investigation, uh, the, to uh, in 2020, there is totally about three billion connectivities, I mean, cellular connectivities, among them. About 70 percent is IPW applications, about two billions, the low speed. Okay, uh, yeah, this how this is the advantages of IPWA loading better coverage, low cost, massive connect connection, and uh, low power consumption. Mobility and voltage is mainly featured by uh, KTM. This is the main details of the uh, uh, better coverage. Uh, the reason first is they have, have a better PSD uh, parameters, and the second one is uh, 
repetition and the retransmission mechanisms are uh, applied in, in the LG and KTM. This is the second advantage of low power consumption uh, because that is a KSM mode and also that's EDX. This is, this is the two key technologies to extend the battery life. This one is massive connection. For every uh, cell, that is totally uh, about uh, 50,000 50, uh, attachment negativity in theory. So this is a uh, uh, this is a big uh, a big improvement when comparing to our to the traditional two uh, G, three G, and four G. It's a low cost. I think uh, maybe currently the cost is not as low as we expected for MBLT and the CATM network, but I think. Uh, uh, this is a trend, trend when comparing to a 2G. You know? Although currently 2G is, is even cheaper, but uh, I think in the future, 2G will keep the stable, but uh, in the LT and KTM will become lower and lower. It's um, the network architecture, uh, it's in the LT, the, mod the module, and uh, this E node B of in the LT, and it's RT call, and the LT platform is the uh, the platform is a uh, is a very key uh, is a critical factors for MLT and KTM. So nearly all the application required uh, their own uh, platform for the connectivity. Most of them are uh, used COAP COP and MQTT uh, protocols. Okay. This one is our quick tell module roadmap. Currently, we are developing um, our LPWA uh, product line with Qualcomm, MediaTek, and High Silicon with these three uh, chipsets. As for Qualcomm, we have DT96. This module is in mass production now. Actually, the total shipment is up to uh, 1.5 million PCS now to date. Uh, uh, also, you know, Qualcomm is uh, has a new generation uh, IPWA chipset named MDM9205. With MDM9205, we are developing um, four series modules. First is PG95 series. This is uh, uh, the pin to pin compatible, uh, compatible with our existing BG96. And uh, also BG77, this is a very small, uh, this model is with a very small size uh, form factor. It's, it's actually, this model is the smallest uh, one in all critical uh, products. products portfolio. Uh, the third one is PC600R. This is the pin to pin compatible with our 2G module MC60. Yeah. And the PC69 is also compatible with our 2G module M66. Okay, it's Qualcomm. Next is Militech. Militech, we most develop uh, promote PC66. This is MB only module and support at MB1. And the BC CC A is it's only uh, promoted in North America because of some special bind requested by T Mobile. And the BC97 is a dual mode, MB2 and 2G. The engineer sample is ready now. BC95 O in the unique feature is it supports 450 mega. Hertz. This is a band, uh, band 31. And also, this module is, is ready now. We, we can provide the samples to test. Uh, the band, uh, band 31, I mean, it's 450, is mainly uh, deployed in Europe. Uh, 
uh, and uh, Brazil. Uh, actually, uh, this is placed in the, uh, the previous CDMA network. This one. High silicon, we have B75 XG. Uh, this is uh, means actually this is the main mainstream MB module in China market. Now, we have shipped more than 10 million pieces of this module in China market. And the BC68 is, uh, uh, is a smaller size with high silicon. It is compatible with BC66 six family. Actually, from the old map, uh, there is mainly two form factors. We call them nine family. You can see this uh, name starts from nine, like B96, B95, and uh, BC97, BC950, BC95, SG. This is a share the same form factor. We will call them nine family. And the second uh, important form factor is six family, like BC66 and BC68. Also, uh, BC69 is the same form factor. I will show you the, uh, the, the picture in the next slide. Okay, it's a summary. Uh, it's the MP in MS production modules summary. Now, currently, we have B96, B95, BC68, and BC66. It's four modules in mass production now. It's, uh, it's Developed by Qualcomm, High Silicon, and Militech three modules. This is a different. You can see the compatibility. It's a nine family compatible with each other, and also nine family, six, six family. Yeah, this one. Okay, this is my highlights and the certification. All the modules are past the certifications required by the market. Okay, this is the end of development now. BG95 series, it's based on Qualcomm MD1905. Supports more global bands. Also, highlight is in the uplink, uh, the test report is increased to 1.12 megabits. And the second highlight is the, it's, uh, the, it's uh, mm, wide power supply range from 2.4 port to 4.8 port. So it's a very, very wide power supply range. Okay, it's BG77, the smallest one. The size is only 40 port 9 by 12 port 9 by 1 port 7. It's very, very small size. It's mainly uh, the, the, aim, the target for the smart wearables application and also the size sensitive applications. PC 600 r also called construction, is based on, uh, um, uh, it's, it's uh, aimed to be um, compatible with our 2G module, 2G MC60. Yeah, also a smaller size. Okay, this is, uh, MediaTek solutions, we have three modules. Now, the test. Okay, it's the details of, of different uh, modules. It's Qualcomm solution, uh, we have a uh, few chipsets, and uh, for MDM9205, we have seven, the PC95 series have uh, seven SQs. M1 is KDM only, M2 is two modes, KDM1 and MB. M3 means three modes, KDM, MB, and 2G. And M4 is support 450 megahertz, band, 30, band 31. And M5 is support power class five, power class three. The maximum transmitted power is 23 dBm. In the rest of them, the, the default uh, maximum transmitted power is 20 dBm. Okay, M1 is one mode, it's MB only. MF is support Wi Fi positions. Uh, 
all these PT95 series are totally compatible with each other. And the PT77 is smaller size, right? Yeah, MDM906 is PT96. Uh, no, I'm sure we should know this module very well. That's good. The, this is the summaries, lower band. Yeah, all these modules support TSS. Uh, you know, six highlights on this module. You can skip it. It's the specification, the power consumption, uh, obtained in Python mode, that is P micro MPs. And the other mode, you, know, you can see the different, uh, different speakers, uh, different operating mode. It's a main interface, hardware interface, main features. Oh, it supports. I just highlight like default R and IWM term is two features are supported. Default R is very useful. Uh, for example, maybe there is some new features or some there is bugs uh, which should, which should upgrade the firmware to apply the default. It's schedule actually is 218 now, it's in MP now. This is PG96. Uh, Certification uh, speakers. Actually, it's a very mature now. It uh, has uh, too many, so many uh, certifications, and more than 30, currently, including Vodafone in, and Telefonica and in Europe, also CE here. This text reported the new baseline development also in MP from last year. Yeah, this for North America region, I uh, just skip it. Okay, this is for uh, other regions except the North America. Uh, it's a TX3 uh, baseline. Yeah, so you can see SoftBank KDI is completed. Now we are deploy right doing the new and test run others. Also, uh, this, actually this uh, certification uh, is decided by the market requirement. B95. B95 series is a very big, a strong family. A lot of skills here, and highlights here, for the other brand, including some special brand. Okay, so our specification of B95 series. Comparing to B96, this power consumption is much lower. The PSM mode is only three, while in PG96 is 10. Others, that's you know, the module is in under development now, so we have to uh, have to provide more information in the next uh, version, next document version. Mm -hmm. And have many features, many uh, hardware interface. It's completely compatible with PG96. More features like default, are, all these models are developing now. That's M1, it's M M1 term only. Okay. Maybe not very M2 is AMB and, and KTM. More certification plans are added. Let's see, it's M2. M3 is remote, it's called AMB, KTM, and PG. I think this will be uh, suitable to. Uh, in the Europe market. Schedules, yeah. E77 is the smallest model, smallest one. All the portfolios, yeah. So, similar, I think. Similar, this timeline. In the sample we're ready in this month, and says in about September and MP October. It's uh, 600 R, it's pretty being compatible with our 2G module, uh, MC650. It's the timeline that made the engineer sample in August, uh, BC66. This timeline, Vodafone, Telefonica. Yeah. We mainly target for the Europe. Certification requirement. 
Okay, next uh, video term solutions. This is PC uh, 97. This module, the engineer sample already uh, now, but the MP is uh, uh, scheduled in September. It's two modes, NB plus PC. So the two mode, NB only, is PC 66. The highlight of this module. It's a timeline. What for Chambayo completed the sleeping test? Others are, going, are ongoing. But for the regular regulatory institutions have finished GCFCE, FCC, nearly all the all the regulatory uh, requirements. Now this especially is for North America. It's two mode solution. Okay, next uh, has to come. We have BC ninety five dash G. And the uh, BC sixty eight is uh, MB staff module in China. All right, let me be. Uh, I have only only twenty minutes. I, I over time now. I have to speed up. Huh. It's a um, high speed comp solution BC ninety five dash G. It's both based on body car V one fifty. Some technical details. This certification uh, uh, schedule so it also passed a lot of uh, certification requirements, including the barriers and the regulatory test. Okay, uh, from this slide, we can see clearly that the compatibility between uh, the nine family modules including the, MBI, the IPWA module and also 2G, 3G, 4G module. 2G module is my family, 3G module is uh, like M95, and the 3G is UG96, E95, and the 4G, EG95, EG91. It's my family, you can share the same footprint. So it's very convenient for customers to, 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 take, to make the compatible design switch and uh, uh, between different uh, different technologies. Uh, this is nine family, BC95, uh, BC69, uh, BC it's a six family, uh, BC69, BC66, and BC58, be compatible. And also all this module compatible to our 2 module, M66. Sure, see the compatible. It's 600. At about with our MC uh, Okay, uh, that's all for the product overview. Next day, some applications. I'm sure all uh, you are very familiar with it. Currently, there is mainly four segments of the application of IPWA. First one is public utility, uh, like various of kinds of uh, of meters, like watt meter, gas meter, parking, smoke alarm with light and all the public utilities. Second one is personal life, uh, asset tracking, wearable device, and personal tracking, all kind of tickets. Third one is industry and agriculture. Also smart home, including the smart lock, the smart air condition, smart uh, washing machine, and all kind of things. Smart meter is smart home, street light, yeah, it's packing by uh, bike sharing or animal testing uh, for agriculture it's for gas detector. Okay, uh, that's all. So I have to uh, speed up because that's only 20 minutes. And uh, I think if you if you have any any question, you can contact me uh, by email or uh, or or even uh, tell me on. Uh, and I, I will try my best to, to support you. And uh, after, after me, uh, my colleague Radu will provide a, a presentation of the IPWA in a demo based on B96. Okay, hello, hello Radu, can you hear me? Hello? Radu, it's your turn now. 
Hello? Hello. Hello, Radu. Can you hear me? Yeah, now. Yeah, hey, you. Okay. Now. Let okay. me switch okay. to my presentation. Okay. It's your. Okay. Okay. Hello everybody, I'm Radu, I'm Quackter Field Application Engineer. I support SOSIS in Europe and we will discuss today some uh, insights about narrow technologies and we will do a live demo with BG96 module in Vodafone's MBIT network. Let's start with something you know, how 2G technology works. So have a 2G module, when you first power it on, it will require a high current peak up to 2 amps to search uh, the network. Then we'll uh, attach and transfer the data, and uh, it uh, transitions into a uh, listening uh, state. If you have a battery powered application, you may want to uh, cut off the power, the so power of the device, to save power consumption. This sequence uh, will repeat each time the model will wake up. So search for the network with high current peaks, and then uh, go to power off again. So it will consume a lot of power when it searches the network due to these uh, high current peaks. If you compare it to low power area, wide area technologies, first difference is that uh, current peaks are much lower, so 8 to 10 times lower than 2G. Usually it's uh, 250 milliamps, this is maximum, Usually, typically it's 200 milliamps. Another difference is this uh, PSM mode, uh, which means power saving mode that it, it is integrated already in the device and the device is sleeping, not powered off while still consuming very low power below 4 microamps so comparable to leakage current of a switching transistor but let's see what happens more in detail similar to 2G, when the module is first powered on it will search the network but with lower current consumption and they will register uh, and the test network sends some data remaining in some idle mode where it just listens to the network and then instead of powering off it will switch itself in this power saving mode so you don't need a switching transistor it will uh, go to, to deep sleep where consumption is very low and next time it will wake up it will not search the network again it will just do a short sync the network to see if the cell is still there. If there is data to send, it will send data. If not, it will uh, go to idle again, listen from data from the network, and after a while, it will go to back to sleep again. So this will repeat uh, each time. If the model wants to wake up uh, to send some data, it can wake up anytime, send the data, and then repeat the cycle. But what's important to uh, note here is that registration it's one time only, so uh, consumption is reduced due to this uh, time, limited time when the module searches for the network. This is because uh, such devices are uh, supposed to be stationary, so cell, same cell uh, will be available also next time after the wake up. There are some timers, one is called uh, idle time, when the module is listening uh, to data from the network and uh, the big one is called the uh, traffic update time which includes the PSM time actually the PSM the difference between uh, this traffic update time and the idle time and this idle time can be extended so now it's 2.5 seconds can be extended uh, up to 40 minutes which means if you don't want to use PSM because the module is not reachable in this time you can extend this DRX time, DRX means discontinuous reception, so the module will still be reachable each 40 image from the network side, this is the maximum uh, setup, uh, but still have a lower power consumption than compared to standard usage. This EDRS time can be up to 44 minutes for uh, KTM1 and up to 3 hours for MBOT technology. Okay, let's focus now on BG96 module. It supports three different networks, CAT-M, 
CAT NB1 and 2G. It also is multiband, supports multiple bands and different uh, protocols. At application level, it supports uh, LWM to M protocol and MQTT, two very common uh, protocols used in IoT industry. And you can actually write your own code inside the device using ThreadX and QAPI from Qualcomm. For tracking applications, it includes a GNSS with Lona's amplifier integrated. Power range is from 3.3 to 4.3 volts. Consumption in this power saving mode is 10 micrograms for this module, uh, but for BG95, uh, which is next generation based on different chipset, this will be 3 micrograms in power saving mode. Okay, now let's go to testing. For this, we'll use uh, the BG96 simulation board, the kit with antenna and cables and so on. You can find documentation following this link. On the laptop, we'll use a QCOM application, which is a serial terminal. You can use any serial terminal that you have. You can get this one from the link shown here. And for the UDP server, we'll use one that is in my office, uh, running on Raspberry Pi. Has uh, this fixed IP and is listening on this uh, port. Okay, so this is the test architecture. Module sends UDP data to the server. Server replies back. This is how it tests the UDP works. Then the server is also client, MQTT client, that will publish this data to an MQTT broker, a free broker called Cloud MQTT. And then using your own laptop or smartphone, you can connect the same broker, subscribe to this topic, and you will see actually live data from the module. This is how the page looks like. So this is the link you will need to access to see live data from the module. And second test will be MQTT. So uh, we'll publish directly from the module uh, MQTT messages to this broker and see it on the web client. So this is how our uh, EVB looks like. This is the box. Let's see what's in the box. A uh, flyer with instructions how to connect and some uh, accessories. Some are optional. This is the evaluation board itself. First, uh, connect the uh, RF cable. Make sure it's uh, connected tightly. Then uh, screw the antenna. And finally, the module on a TA adapter board. Snap in on the two connectors. Then connect the uh, RF cable. This is more delicate, so take care. Now I will connect the USB serial cable in this uh, main UART on the left. And then for power supply we will use uh, USB on the bottom. We can also use uh, standard DC adapter, but 5 volts, not standard, the one provided in the box. And I put a SIM card before I turn on the module. And this is the board. Okay, this is the live demo part of the webinar. You can see here the QCOM application already up and running. Let's load some scripts from here. I created for you a script with the comments already set up so you don't have to type anything. Just click these buttons. But first, open the communication port, turn on the power of the board, and press the power key to turn on the module. Wait for the module to boot up. Okay, model is up and running. Now we'll execute some comments here on the right. To change some uh, default values of some parameters. So the we'll, device will uh, search and attach to MBN1 network faster. So first comment set the band to band 20. Uh, for Vodafone Romania, for other operators, check with them what band they use and check the manual how, uh, to, what value to use here for that band. Next one, change network scanning mode to LT only, change network scan sequence to NB1 to have priority over CAT M1 and 2G, change IOTP operation mode to NB1 only, and change uh, service domain to PS only, 
because LT only uses a packet switch domain. Now enable some uh, notifications. This one enables notifications when the module is registered to the network. This one enables notifications when module is disconnected or connected from the network. And finally, this one uh, will notify when the PSM timer expires. And all those notifications will use a uh, UART1 because uh, UART1 port is used for uh, AT comments in this example. Now turn on the module and set the APN. This value is very important uh, for the device to work. So APN is uh, you can get it from operator, specific to each operator. Next one, execute manual registration to Vodafone, Romania, on uh, 9 means MV1 network. So module is already registered, we got OK here. It may take some time until you get OK, so don't execute other comments until you have an OK here. Next one, we can check some uh, status. So uh, this is uh, actually these are our four comments online. CGAT means uh, one means uh, module is attached. CREG one means module is registered. Some network information. So CAT MB1 network, Vodafone Romania on LT band 20, and this is the channel number used. And the disk count will output the IP address of the module, IP assigned from the network. Now let's activate the PDB context. When we work with data, we need to have a PDB context active. And now open a connection to a server. So this is a UDP connection to this server, to this port. Actually here on the left is a window that will show us live data to this remote server. Okay, now we'll send some data. We'll send some uh, text information encoded as hex to this comment. If the data is received by the server, shown here, this is a public IP from the server. And we got here a URC, meaning we have incoming data on uh, socket 0. So use this comment, uh, read data on socket 0, and we receive 24 bytes, and this is the actual data. What we sent was replied back from the server. This is an echo server. And now we can close the connection. So this is a simple test to show UDP data sending and receiving an IBOT network with BG96 model. Now we will make a test for direct MQTT data sent from the module side. Let's switch first uh, on this uh, window. This is an MQTT client connected to an MQTT broker server. Subscribe to topic temperature. Okay, so we'll make a connection to the same server. It connected. Now we'll authenticate with username and password. We're, uh, okay, we subscribe to the same topic temperature and we got the same value because now the module is also client to this network and subscribe for this topic as the left window. But now we'll publish on the same topic. So, publish on topic temperature. This command will open an input, uh, activate the input mode, and we need to enter here uh, the value by hand. So, change it to 21. And now we need to do control Z. So can characters 1A in hex is control Z. And now the data is published and you see it's already updated on the server side. And because we're also subscribed to the topic, we get uh, the same data back. Now you can close the connection. So this is it. This is how you send the data using MQTT protocol with B96. Thank you for listening. We are Waiting now for your comments and questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Radio. I hope you hear me. Uh, yes, I hear you. Yeah, thanks. Um, uh, I have one question in case the, the attendees or, or somebody else is trying to, trying to do it and has some problems. Uh, is there any tech support um, in a coactel? can help them or what uh, who's can they contact directly uh, for technical questions they can contact me directly for uh, uh, commercial yeah but you are responsible for 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 us and for hungarian uh, hungarian uh, for romania hungary yes. Ber uh, serbia bulgaria croatia and slovenia 
Okay, what about Slovak Slovak customers? <laughs> Slovak, we have uh, Mikal, another uh, FA. Okay, okay. Another field application engineer. Okay, so directly you do directly you as a field application engineers, right? Yes, for the region I cover, uh, and if it's not my region, I can buy, I can pass to my colleague. Okay, okay, great. And I have one question also for David. I hope you are with us still, David. Um, the in hello, hello, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, great. Uh, we had a question regarding, um, an interesting question. Uh, yeah, who are my cell phones and mobile phones? I think a lot of us is, uh, is a little bit touched by the information that, um, these modules that are built on high silicon chips, high silicon belongs to Huawei, and Huawei was lately prohibited to use ARM core. So, uh, what will happen with these modules that are built on high silicon chips? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's some um, uh, question about the tariff war between Huawei and uh, maybe Britain and, and the US. Actually, maybe the war between Huawei and uh, and Trump. <laughs> but actually, yeah, it's a uh, no. Uh, high silicon is belong to Huawei. Yeah, but uh, also uh, actually the Polita. Chipset uh, is uh, IoT platform, not 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 the, the smartphone. It's, uh, it's, it's a different uh, um, different uh, usage. But, uh, but yeah, we you can see our high silicon module is mainly uh, uh, promoted in the Asia and uh, uh, Europe and the regions outside North America. So yeah, the, the US market, uh, we didn't promote uh, high silicon uh, based uh, modules. David, uh, may I answer this question? Yeah, okay, okay. Thomas, thank you. Hi, uh, Thomas Reher uh, speaking. Um, first, uh, uh, regarding Huawei, uh, we have two modules now active on Huawei platform. Uh, already for a while, we are noticing that Huawei is not launching uh, launching any new chipsets, and it's question what uh, they are planning to do on, on narrow band for the future. Uh, there is no uh, fear that these two models will disappear. So for running projects, we will be able to supply them. But for the future, uh, we would uh, recommend you to stay on uh, models with MediaTek or, or Qualcomm chipsets. This is the answer to, to your um, question, um, Denisa. Okay. Okay. Thanks. I uh, and for all, uh, for both Huawei uh, models, uh, so BC uh, sixty-eight and BC ninety-five, we have actually pin-to-pin -pin replacement uh, on MediaTek uh, and also with MediaTek and uh, also in the future with Qualcomm uh, chipsets. So there is no um, how to say. We don't see any uh, real problem uh, now or in the future on it. Okay. Uh, and this ARM story will not influence on the current already uh, in production chipsets. Okay. This can influence in uh, for future products. Okay. No, uh, and no. second question uh, mm -hmm. to answer your question, uh, your question to Radu about uh, support. Mm -hmm. If customer is from Hungary, for example, and end customer is in Hungary, Radu is supporting. If customers uh, who is developing is uh, from Czech, Slovak then uh, Mihai is supporting. Yes, yes. Just uh, just to clear this out. If uh, end customer of Hungarian customer uh, or, or uh, Hungarian R&D, uh, 
if n customer of uh, Hungarian R&D is outside uh, hung Hungary, for example, let's say in Brazil, mm -hmm. uh, Rado support. Okay, so still belongs to... Yeah, where R&D is located, the dedicated uh, FAE for this region is supporting. Okay, good. I still have two questions uh, that uh, we need to answer to our um, attendees or visitors. What's the schedule of LPWA network deployment in Europe? When do we'll have full cut M coverage? Is this question, uh, this is not question for Quicktel, this is normally question for operators. Do you have any, uh, any, any information about it? So uh, only know. what I know for Hungary that, uh, that uh, CAT M is already available by T systems. Okay. And uh, the last and, uh, 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 Simply um, to answer your question, uh, every operator who is running LTE has possibility to open CAT M with simple upgrade of firmware. It's only their decision to do it. So it still depends on the operator the, in the company. Everything 100% uh, depends from operator and their business model how what to do with CAT M and CAT NB. We we as Quicktel and uh, customers uh, only must be ready when network will be opened uh, with the devices. Okay, and uh, one more question. Um, what about the support of 2J network? What do you think when it will be completely shut down in Europe? It's a question. Uh, again, Thomas speaking. Uh, Quicktel did worldwide analysis uh, and uh, uh, we cannot give you uh, exact uh, date or year, but after uh, the result of this analysis, uh, it came out that in general, under the line, 2G uh, will be worldwide close 2025 and uh, 3G 2020. This is a result of worldwide analysis and uh, discussion with all operators. When exactly, which operator in, in which country will close it, again, is a question uh, which, uh, for, for operator. But what we are sure for now, Australia already closed 2G and 3G and US already closed 2G. So the process started and uh, based on our analysis, 3G will be uh, closed in average 2020 and 2G 2025. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Well, uh, I do not see more questions. So in case you have any other question after the webinar, you can write them down to SOS Electronic to me or, or contact Radu as you were taught. Uh, the recording from this webinar, we will publish on our web pages and social media as usually. After summer in September, we plan to have a webinar with the Technaxion company. And at the end, let me uh, thank you, David, Radu and Thomas for an interesting and detailed webinar presentation. Also, I'd like to thank you all who attended our event and stay with us during the presentation. You can follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Denisa, organizing this. Thank you. Have thank a you. pleasant day. Thanks thank you. Day. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. -bye. bye, -bye.